Now, as Nigeria continues its inexorable march towards the presidential elections next year, there are calls for a peaceful transition and transfer of power. With insecurity, terrorism and coup d'etat ravaging several parts of West Africa and the Sahel, a new group is acting as a sort of watchdog in Nigeria against tyranny and anarchy. The Committee of Business, Political, Media and Civil Society Leaders was set up with one mandate to defend Nigeria's national interest in a time of cri crisis and transition. Let's take a listen. historic transition like no other. And we have crisis across Africa, from South Africa to Mozambique, to the Central African Republic, to the Sahel, where crisis around. And it was the security, we have everything that shouldn't be challenging us. Therefore, we also have people who say, or separatist movements around the place. Today, they say they want this type of president or that type of president. So we thought that this is the time to defend the national interest. And the 2022 committee is put together to do just that, defend Nigeria at a time of crisis and at a time of transition. I congratulate Nduka uh, for taking this initiative and getting us here. And uh, I thank you very much for the people I have seen, successful people. Who, each one of you can write a book on you are going to where you are. I haven't seen anybody who got it easily here. This initiative you have taken is very good. I hope you have, I wish you have taken it much earlier. And I have in the studio with me the co-convener of the Committee of Business, Political, Media, and Civil Society Leaders, Kashem Ibrahim Imam. Good to have you around. Good afternoon, viewers. Yes. And uh, let's, let's take a look at this uh, committee. Uh, a lot of persons may be confused as to if this is not the same function as that of the National Peace Committee, which also has eminent persons and was formed in 2015 to try to safeguard the nation from plunging into challenges after, after, during that transition period. What's, what's the major difference between this committee of uh, notable persons and that of the National Peace Committee? Well, I concede that um, as Nigerians, um, all of us are concerned. And um, whether it's the National um, Peace Committee or it's the 2022 committee, the objective is the same. Um, let me address specifically the 2022 committee. It arose out of very genuine concerns by very patriotic and selfless uh, Nigerians um, about the direction in which our country is headed. Um, yes, we held our first meeting on Sunday. The president hosted us to dinner um, yesterday, Monday, but uh, the effort has been in the making for more than um, two years. I'm sure you'd agree with me, as every Nigerian will agree with us, that the country is practically, literally on the brink. And we felt that something must be done to arrest the, 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 the situation. Uh, whatever um, strategic or key area that you look at, whether it's the economy, um, it's um, security, um, it's our polity. Um, Nigeria is not at peace. Um, the economy has deteriorated. Um, the security is deteriorating by the day. Our polity is threatened. So um, a number of us, and it, it, it arose out of 
several meetings. It, it is not something that just happened um, overnight. We've yeah, the, the, and I mean, with the bipartisan nature of this group, you could see APC leaders, there, PDP leaders, there, business, I mean, how are, yeah, bis business leaders business and all leaders, of the civil society. Yeah. How are you able to actually bring all of these people together, including some critics of uh, President Buhari? Yeah. I mean, it was good seeing all of them we, right there at the state house. We felt that um, we've reached the stage that it can no longer be left just to us politicians alone. It was important for us to engage across board. So you must have seen um, we consciously elected, at the risk of sounding very modest, to bring together the 100 leading lights from diverse fields, diverse um, backgrounds. So um, you have politicians and non-politicians. Now, among the politicians also, you must have noticed the fact that it caught across party lines. Um, so we felt that we should dialogue as, 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 as Nigerians, um, um, address, analyze the problems first, because without in-depth analysis of the crisis confronting us, you cannot prefer solutions. So it was uh, first to analyze, to discuss, and then to, mo most importantly, to prefer um, solutions. We've started uh, I also considered in my introductory remarks that, yes, the list of 100, by every criteria, um, is an excellent um, list, but it is not exhaustive. Yeah, I mean, even so the president was saying it, that you need to still add more people we, to the we group. Will, we not only will we need to add more people, we are actually going to add more people. We'll reach out more, we'll consult more. We've also agreed that we must sustain the momentum. So we met only on Sunday. President hosted us to dinner on Monday. We are doing a retreat Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday um, is, is 4th, Saturday is 5th of uh, February, Sunday is 6th. So all of us will leave whatever strategic, whatever important um, business that we have at hand. We will lock ourselves up um, um, uh, and, and find hotel. better solutions. And I want yeah. to ask you: Do you believe, by any chance, that the two biggest political parties won't be able to manage Nigeria's diversity ahead of 2023? That's why you're putting together this platform. Well, because you maybe you're afraid of PDP and APC being unable to manage our diversity due the, to the, the cause for zoning and all of that. The fact is that. Um, um, we strongly um, have the opinion that um, we needed to do this across party lines. It's not so much that the parties cannot um, find um, solutions to our problems. The problems are so grave that we decided to go even beyond partisan politics. So you, you find people like Aliko Dangote, um, Abdusama Disaka Rabiu, Jimovia, um, Ateto Peter Said. Um, Fola um, um, Adeola, um, Femi uh, Otedola, uh, Wale Tinumbu, um, Tope um, Shonevi, um, and a host of. And the list goes on. And, uh, <laughs> um, very, uh, um, how about we go? Let me also um, 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 mention, as I said, and several others. The fact that uh, Nigerians uh, of this caliber who have succeeded in different fields of uh, business um, endeavors are uh, uh, feel compelled to come out of their comfort zones, so to say, to, to, to for the first time perhaps um, participate in, in, in an endeavor like this um, speaks volumes about the direction in which this country is headed. And we strongly believe that um, just as they have succeeded in their different fields of endeavor, um, if we marry our efforts, those of us in politics, those in business, business banking, uh, manufacture, oil, uh, you just name it. So yeah, uh, 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 every, everybody is there. Now what is also encouraging is almost everybody that we invited and that we reached out to came and came promptly, participated, contributed, um, so I think that this is, um, uh, we are heading in the right direction. Yeah, I mean, it looks like the rebirth of a national platform that will actually drive a fresh conversation. And a lot of Nigerians want to wonder what the ideas you are putting on the table 
are for the Buhari presidency as it exists in 2023. What are the things, the proposals, the fresh ideas that you're giving into the government ahead of the next government coming to take over President Buhari? First, I President want to consider that um, President Buhari got it very right um, in uh, one, analyzing the problems even before he was sworn in. Two, um, in drawing up a program of action um, uh, centered on or around the economy, um, security, uh, and the fight against corruption. Um, if uh, you ask me to add a fourth one, probably is this agitation that is becoming relentless now, whether it's IPOP, um, it's Odudua, um, um, and so on, that is threatening um, the very basis of uh, remain, remain united as a nation. So that is probably the only new thing that um, uh, arose in the course of our conversation. But he got it right in saying, look, the, the, the economy is critical, um, security is critical, the fight against corruption is critical. By the way, um, from the onset, he acknowledged the fact that, yes, corruption is getting worse, um, but um, uh, the civilian President Buhari is different from the military, the military president, president <laughs> the military Buhari. head of state here. Yeah. Now he said, and let me quote him, let me use his words, that as military president, he just assumed everybody guilty until proven innocent. But as civilian president, he has to, he's bided by uh, the constitution, by a rule of law. Yeah, so follow the system, like he likes saying. Everybody <laughs> um, innocent until proven otherwise. It is actually now that we need him more than uh, uh, even as the military president for him actually to um, assume that all of us are guilty until um, proven um, otherwise because uh, this, the, 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 the rot in the system, the scale of the corruption, everything has worsened. Um, a lot of us were founding members of the PDP and we left to go and form the APC. When that happened, the, we thought that nothing happened worse than what was happening under President Jonathan as far as the issue of corruption is concerned can happen. But it has, uh, what is happening in this country is that um, corruption, the, again let me call the uh, president, he says that corruption has the capacity to fight back and corruption is actually fighting back. But the worst thing is it gets progressively worse. Um, under the First Republic there was near zero corruption. We started hearing about um, um, corruption uh, or 10 percenting under yeah, which has under, been with um, in under, Nigerian under, politics on, on, for several on, years on, on, under President <laughs> Chagari. Now it's worse, far worse than just um, 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 10 percenting. And so that I don't even drill from our core objectives. The most critical thing um, to us is definitely the economy. Everything is about the economy. There so so there's, all, a, all, there's a focus all, on political economy here yeah, by your group. Yeah. Are you afraid I, I, by any chance that the nation may not hold the 2023 general election due to all these problems, challenges of insecurity, and that's why you're all coming together as eminent Nigerians to support the government and push forward a new narrative of nationalism so that Nigerians will queue behind you? The problem of insecurity is directly linked to the economy. You can't divorce one um, from the other. As they say, a hungry man is an angry man. Um, so those carrying guns are actually very hungry. Uh, one is not making um, excuses um, for such behavior, but um, uh, that is the truth. I personally saw the uh, issue of um, insecurity coming as far back as 30 years ago. I was state chairman of the SDP, and we used to go on campaigns to different local governments in my state. Uh, that's uh, Borno State. Borno State. Before and when we used to just drive into uh, any local government headquarters, you'd see young boys in their thousands chasing our convoy. I would look at my wristwatch, it's 10 a.m., 11 a.m., and I would say to myself that these kids should be in school. The yeah. fact that they are not in school, is what has now presently le le uh, brought us to 
where we are today. Yeah, I mean, uh, I remember former uh, CBN governor uh, uh, Sanusi Lamedo Sanusi actually raising this same issue some time ago, about a decade ago, where he said that the North is is like a time bomb and something needed to be done. Uh, you've seen several governors come out of that region, and you yourself, you, you, you've witnessed what that region has become, especially your own state. Are you afraid that if leaders... Uh, uh, both political, religious, and all of that don't rise up, this could spread nationally, and we could be in a bigger trouble than we are today. 2022. Precisely. And this is what has, the acknowledgement that something needs to be done and done urgently, is what has united us, is across party lines, um, politicians, non-politicians, is what uh, has brought us together, uh, is why we felt that we needed to engage we need to hold a conversation, we need to talk to each other, we need to find solutions very urgently, um, most especially on the issue of the economy. Uh, we, we as a nation, we have no business being where we are today. And I've said this uh, several times. Um, we have a population of 200 million, young, dynamic, the population in Japan is aging, in Germany is aging, in Italy is aging, across Western Europe is aging. In our case, we have very young, very uh, dynamic uh, population, mainly uh, youths, uh, that their energies can be channeled towards production. Um, secondly, uh, Nigerians are the best educated people in the world. In the U.S., it, it just Google it, the most educated people, and it gives you one word, Nigerians. We also, as a nation, are blessed with every imaginable natural resource. So it's not only human resource that we have, educated human resource, we also have natural resource. Yeah. Uh, our, our oil is the best. We, we have gold and bauxite. Uh, if you scratch us th the surface like this, you find limestone in, part, in several parts of the country. If you go to a, a, another part of the country, you scratch the surface, like in Enugu, you find coal. Yeah. So, so but uh, in the APC now, how are APC leaders actually receiving this uh, new narrative, this new message from your committee? I mean, I could even see uh, my chairman, Dokao Baikbena, raising these very mm. critical issues of nation building that need to be attended to by this government before it exits. But the need for us to also have a country uh, after the election. So how is this message of this 2022 committee being received by those in power at the moment? The fact that um, the president hosted us to dinner just last night and barely 24 hours after we went public, after we held our first meeting, is sufficient evidence that um, this has been received very well, that government is listening and um and you don't think it's him, late for him for him to, uh, there are governors that uh, 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 were involved i i was here on both sides so okoa was there uh Tumbo was there um obaseki was there so there were, you also had um um pdp governors just as you have amoy malabuni uh, atuku uh, bagudu um uh, 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 uh um um, uh, Abu Sainibello, um, uh, Senolu, um, uh, Kayode, Fayemi, um, Dave, Umahi, and a host of other um, PDP, uh, uh, sorry, APC governors. In attendance, not only in attendance, everybody contributed because everybody is concerned. So um, it's a very positive narrative. Um, the president welcomed it publicly, openly. Um, he said he wished that uh, we had we took this initiative. Yeah, I mean that's uh, what he was said. As three, if three, three, four years. Yeah, if it had happened previously, yeah. maybe even in his first term, it, it, it's better late than, than never. never. Very at, interesting at least indeed. We have now, and you, you can see that. Imagine the caliber of people in the hall. Um, uh, I don't think that anybody can question me if I say, look, this is easily the best that this country has to uh, on offer. And we're able to bring everybody together under the same roof, the same uh, um, uh, to, to, to analyze, and it's all selfless. I emphasized, I re-emphasized at the meeting, at dinner, that this is not about any single individual. 
it is about our country, Nigeria. Um, 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 that is very important. So um, there is no hidden agenda. Um, there is nobody behind the scene that is. Yeah, being I mean, because there could also be fears that I mean, you are trying to build a consensus around one presidential aspirant or something like that. Do you know what makes that very <laughs> difficult? I, I will tell you. We have we had in attendance one hundred presidential materials. Very interesting. Look, to know. look at it. Every single person is credible. Is, is worthy, is deserving of being president of Nigeria. Alikwet Angote, Abdul Samad Isakarabiu, I'm Jimovia, I'm Tony Elumelu, I'm, I'm Hubbard Wigwe, Atedo Peter Said, I'm Fola Adeola, um, I'm Femi Otedola on the private sector side. If you look at um, those that are in politics with us, I was there, I'm uh, um, um, Pius I'm, um, Bukola Saraki was there. And he spoke, and they contributed. Um, our elder, our elders, let me put it this way. So Bawaki Ngiwe was there. Um, Shogo Oshoba was there. Um, Boss Mustafa was there. Um, Professor Ibrahim Gambari was there. I can actually go on and yeah, on and on. Uh, and, and so I, I in a situation like this, you can't either allege or say that one, there's no individual. Yeah, and, and This is beyond any individual. Thank you very much. <laughs> a lot of Nigerians will actually want to read meanings into this, but how do you just try to, uh, 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 you know, uh, carry along other Nigerians not to see these issues politically, but to look at it from a s separate perspective, a perspective that's meant to actually drive a new narrative of nationalism? Because, I mean, Nigerians keep reading politics into almost everything that happens because of the times that we're in. Well, I'm almost, um, half of those in attendance, by the way, are not non-politicians. Um, Kim Bello Osage, he flew in from Harvard. And it's also instructive that he left the shores of this country. He does lecture series at Harvard University. He left just a week before that. And he assured me that he would come back for this meeting. And he came. Right. Um, Udoma, Udo Udoma has been with us round the clock, yeah, um, giving good. advice, guiding us, um, <coughs> uh, making contributions. V very interesting. We just have to go on a break now. When we come back, we'll continue the conversation. You're still watching the Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Somna Sambu. And we've been having this uh, very critical discussion on the way forward uh, for Nigeria. This group of uh, business, political, civil society, and several other leaders converging at the presidential villa to meet with President Buhari, who hosted them. And uh, we had several discussions on nation building and uh, what needs to be done in several aspects. And the critical things that we've been talking about here with uh, Kashim Ibrahim Imam, uh, one of the co-convener of the commit uh, 2022 committee is on how to revive the issue of nationhood, nation building, to ensure that Nigeria remains one even after the election. And I still have him here in the studio with me. And uh, I, I want to go critically to this aspect where you talked of defending the national interest. A lot of Nigerians are usually confused about what the national interest means. Some people at times mistake it for regime security, while others actually feel that it's uh, national interest is actually what the elites think it is. What exactly is the national interest that the 2022 committee is mm -hmm. trying to protect here? Number one, um, we must have a nation. That is at its barest minimum. A nation that is united, um, a nation that is prosperous, a nation that every Nigerian will have a sense of belonging, um, a nation that every Nigerian is guaranteed has security, a nation that every Nigerian is guaranteed employment, a nation that um, every guarantee, uh, 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 um, uh, every Nigerian is guaranteed the, the uh, access to uh, affordable health care, um, access to um, um, good education. So, um, uh, in, in whatever these are the minimal um, um, expectations of, 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 of all citizens 
um, globally. This is what citizens expect from their country. And we have all the ingredients that can easily um, guarantee this. I alluded to the fact that we have a population of young population of 200 million we have ever uh, that are educated so we have human resource we have um, 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 natural resources um, we have all that it takes so we we must as Nigerians um, dialogue and agree um, to live in peace as Nigerians. Yeah, the issue of ethnicity and religion is one that usually divides us to the extent that we don't see Nigeria more as a nation, but we see it as a country of several nations. How would uh, your committee actually build an elite consensus around these issues? Because, like, I mean, we had several of the speakers uh, talking about there's a need for an elite consensus on some key issues that divide Nigeria at the moment. So how would you build such a consensus? You see, first, uh, uh, the consensus that we are trying to to build um, is not only on the need for us to agree to live as one people in one indivisible country, but also agree on matters of um, the economy, on, 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 on prosperity, um, how do we get our economy to grow. And I think those from the private sector have a critical role to play in this. By the way, we've divided ourselves into three committees, one on the economy, the second one on security, the third one on the polity, and um, we'll be de de taking their reports and deliberating on their reports um, at the retreat that um, um, we are proposing. Now, again, for majority of us in that hall, um, let me allow myself the luxury of saying, for me, um, uh, I find it most strange. I find it very uncomfortable. Um, and I will tell you why. I grew up as a Nigerian. I see myself as a Nigerian. I, uh, I travel frequently. So when people, when I meet Nigerians, they will say, where are you from? I will say, I'm a Nigerian. <laughs> um, they will ask again, where in Nigeria? I will say, I'm a Nigerian. Wow. Um, I am a northerner by ascription, i.e. by accident of birth. The fact that my parents are from the north, that makes me a northerner. I am a southerner by achievement. I've lived in the south all my life. I schooled in the south. Um, I forged friendships. Uh, for friendships, I would say I have forged that across the whole of Nigeria. I'm at home in every clan. If you come to my house, it's like a melting Part of sorts. Yeah, so, I mean, so, so probably do because of your education at King's College. How did that influence you at that very young age to build, you know, this relationship across uh, several uh, borders? I was actually going to say that before I just ventured out to come to the studios. So Kyle Defy me was with me for two hours <laughs> after he <laughs> left. Dave Umar he came and he spent another two hours with me. Wow. Uh, King's College, very important. The Unity Schools, most important. Uh, for King's College, we are only 60 in my set, just 60 of us. But, and I don't know how it was done then, uh, certainly there was no corruption. Now, even in admissions to schools, in employment, in everything, there's corruption. But when we are kids growing up, we are 60, and every state of the federation had three, four, three, four, three, four. There. Remember, there were only 19 states then. Yeah. So, um, you, from my state, myself, Mustafa Damchida, um, Zakari Tata, Zakari Kolo, four of us were admitted into Form 1 in King's College. So out of a population of 60 students, we had students from every state of the Federation. Mm -hmm. From, from, from Benue, uh, Ikape, uh, on Onoja, uh, Idache, and it's like that for each and every state in the country. We just saw ourselves as students. We spoke the same language. Every other language was banned except for English. So th that division simply was not there. Uh, and I want to venture to say probably on behalf of my upbringing, I go to the mosque and I'm in church like almost every other week. I attend burials, I attend weddings, I attend Thanksgiving, I attend all manner of ceremonies in the north, in the south, in the east, in the west.
Yeah, I mean, you are like the typical Nigerian that uh, uh, the founding fathers of the nation had, you know, thought we would have over time. But, you know, having gone beyond 60 years and we're here as a nation, we're still struggling with this issue. Uh, there was one particular um, a thing that uh, Ndukao Bagbena, the chairman of uh, This Day Arise Media Group, said that the 2022 committee was put together to defend Nigeria in a time of crisis and in the time of transition. We must defend the national interest. When it comes to the time of transition like this, a lot of Nigerians are eager to throw ethnic vibes into the political gameplay and all Believing of that. that it give yes, I to give them yes that that's the only way, that's the only vehicle to get to the center. If you don't push or you support some 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 groups that may look like they are causing trouble for that part of the country so that they will be given a, a table at the center, then you won't be able to have a voice. How do you think that we can have nationalistic leaders that don't come to the center through this sort of vehicle? You see um Again, the economy. Um, we've essentially become a consumer nation. We, pr we are producing absolutely nothing. And uh, it is that poverty that is impacting on, on insecurity is that has also become a major threat to our unity, uh, our oneness, um, so we, we need to address the issue of the economy. It's all about the economy. Yeah, but the president if, said he's been doing that over and over. This government said they came in, they inherited challenges, but they are working within the means of what they have. Do you believe some of these government officials, when they actually come to say that, look, we're doing the best within uh, all that's available to us, yet we keep seeing poverty moving up? Even the president, sometimes it could be confusing. He's saying he wants to lift 100 million out of poverty, but sometimes you see the statistics is being rolled out both by the World Bank and all of that. He keeps saying that poverty is rising. He what also, more do you think needs he to He also be done? said something very interesting yesterday. He said um, he, after the coup that um, uh, removed him from office, he was detained for three and a half years. And he said he had to, uh, they released him because he said it, they discovered that he um, as uh, military president, he was actually poorer than when uh, he came in as president. As at the time that he was deposed, he was arrested, he was actually poorer. So you can speak for the president. There's no doubt about it. I actually personally suspect that he's most anxious to hand over and just simply retire to his farm. Uh, and that is why when he says that, there's no third term uh, agenda. It's very credible. Everybody knows that the president is honest, um, that he means well. But um, it's also becoming very obvious that um, honesty and, and, and good intentions alone cannot solve or cannot even begin to address the fundamental problems that confront us as a nation. Very um, um, it's also, uh, uh, I want to say this with all sorts of responsibility. The, 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 the level of corruption um, in this country uh, is so high that um, it retards development. It retards our progress um, um, as a nation. Um, so um, somebody is building a flyover for 8 billion uh, a naira. Um, um, let me give the example of the... Very quickly, before we end Well, the show. okay. I, yeah. I, uh, let me just take further questions from you, so that I, 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 I'm not too detailed. <laughs> All right. Uh, almost thank you so much, uh, Kashim Ibrahim. Uh, Imam, uh, the co-convener of the 2022 committee of uh, notable Nigerians who have all come together to ensure that they help to safeguard the national interest ahead of the transition period between now and 2023 when the country will be having a new government.